from having to go through a troubled childhood to possibly having the biggest breakthrough of his life taken away, this is the rise and fall of acclaimed actor and alleged abuser, Jonathan Majors. Majors' life didn't start with sunshine and rainbows. The actor began his life as a son in a family of five. The key issue was that his father walked out on them for 17 years. He was born in 1983 in Santa Barbara, where he lived in the Vandenberg military base. After his dad left, he moved to Dallas, Texas with his mother and two other siblings. From then onward, Majors had to go through a very troubled childhood where his financial situation played a huge part in his lifestyle. He was arrested for shoplifting, suspended from high school, and went through a time when he slept in his car and worked two jobs. Then came theater, which was like a safe space for him, and after seeing Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, Jonathan found his true calling, a calling that didn't last very long. His career was just getting started after appearing in multiple blockbusters including Creed III, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and tons more upcoming projects. In 2017, he got his first on-screen role in Scott Cooper's Hostels, where he starred alongside huge names like Christian Bale, Jesse Plemons, Rosamund Pike, and Timothy Chalamet. In the same year, he played a younger version of Ken Jones in the docuseries When We Rose, where his portrayal was recognized by W Magazine, calling him the show's one to watch. Jonathan's next major role was in A24's The Last Black Man in San Francisco, where he portrayed Montgomery Allen, the supporting character of the film, the same film that was a Sundance hit and earned the actor many nominations for his breakout performance. Perhaps his official big break was when he starred in Lovecraft County, a HBO original that got canceled after one season for being too expensive to maintain. But the 33-year-old didn't need a long-term series to earn the spotlight because in 2021 he appeared as he who remains in the Marvel Disney Plus show, Loki. Now the MCU put all their cards on the deck with this casting because the character turns out to be Kang the Conqueror, the big bad villain that the Avengers will have to face in Phase 6 of the cinematic universe. Before I dive into his controversy, how crucial is the actor to the franchise? Well, imagine everything before Endgame but without Josh Brolin. That's how important Majors is. The smart thing Marvel did back in 2012 with Thanos was to make him completely CGI. Unfortunately, this can't be done with Kong, who's had two practical appearances in Loki and Ant-Man. There is one possible way to replace him though, but I'll get into those details in just a bit. Jonathan having this major role in the MCU and being in Creed 3 all within a year gave everyone the impression that this actor will be the new Robert Downey Jr. in no time. This was the case before he was charged with assault, attempted assault, harassment, and aggravated harassment. On the 25th of March 2023, Majors was arrested by the police after a reported altercation with his unidentified 30-year-old girlfriend. The victim accused him of assault, and the visible injuries on her head and neck didn't help the actor's case whatsoever. Jonathan was released by the judge due to his lack of a criminal record, but he could not have any contact with the alleged victim at all. Jonathan's attorney, Priya Chaudhry, claimed that the accused was innocent and that he was probably the victim of this altercation. She also said that she's gathering video footage to prove Jonathan's innocence and adding that the accuser was having an emotional crisis. His attorney then released screenshots of two text messages hoping it would help his case. The texts that were by the accuser claimed that Majors was acting in self-defense after she tried to grab his phone, which made it look like this was a false accusation, and the police forced her into fabricating the confession by promising he wouldn't be charged. But a Twitter user said that the messages just showed how most abuse victims behave. Since she was very apologetic throughout, the tweet also questioned how the injuries were sustained and that a verbal argument doesn't result in any sort of physical injury. An anonymous co-worker who's involved in one of Jonathan's upcoming projects also claimed that the messages look like the text messages of a textbook abused woman. Okay, even if the victim falsely accused her partner, what happened next didn't help his situation at all. More people came out with their allegations of abuse against the actor, and according to Variety, these women are cooperating with the district attorney's office in Manhattan. For this, Majors appears in court on the 8th of May, and the hearing will determine the fate of the star. It may bring his career back from the dead, but the damage is already done. 
These accusations have left a huge impact on Jonathan's career. I'm talking about a Hulk smash level impact. How'd it get affected? For starters, almost every organization that partnered with the actor cut ties with him. Some of these include the lead company, which was responsible for Jonathan's public relations. This one was kind of predictable as soon as the news was out, because how does a PR team work with an accused abuser? His management company, Entertainment 360, also dropped him as a client, which meant that he'd be getting fewer opportunities and less roles in upcoming movies. As of now, WME still represents the actor, but this is just because of their client advisory committee, which makes a recommendation on whether it's necessary to drop a client if they've been accused of something. Trust me, hardly any agency in Hollywood would be looking forward to working with someone with multiple abuse allegations against them, especially with how the internet reacts to cancel culture. Anyway, the US Army wasted no time to drop Jonathan's ad campaign that he had recently begun, along with many other advertisements that had the actor in them. Jonathan didn't attend the 2023 Met Gala either due to these domestic abuse allegations, nor would he continue modeling for brands he's worked with. In other words, Majors got the Kanye West treatment with his affiliated organizations, and to think he was going to be the center of the MCU till 2026. Advertisements and talent agencies aside, many upcoming projects also ended their contracts with the abuser. These include a film adaptation of Walter Mosley's novel titled The Man in My Basement. The 33-year-old is also no longer considered for the unannounced fifth season's Otis Redding biopic, which has been rumored to be called Otis and Zelma. For now, he's still in the upcoming Marvel films and shows, which includes the second season of Loki, since it's already wrapped up shooting. Spike Lee's Da Understudy is still greenlit and plans on having the actor in an undisclosed role, along with 48 Hours in Vegas, an upcoming film from Lionsgate where Majors will play Dennis Rodman. But these few projects don't do him any good in the long run because the Kang actor is also stepping down from the board of the Gotham Film and Media Institute, along with his work with the Sidney Poitier Initiative, which was formed to support emerging filmmakers. With all of this going on and everyone's reactions on social media, Marvel still hasn't released a statement about their star. Now, people are either laughing at the franchise for basing their next few phases on majors or are pushing them to address the situation. For the time being, their silence speaks volumes and it's going to be really hard to gain viewership for the second season of the God of Mischief show. Ironically enough, the villain was supposed to save Marvel because recently the concept of multiverses and alternate realities has been overused. But with Jonathan cast as Kang and making a sinister debut as He Who Remains, it brought back a lot of people's interest in the ongoing story. Sure, it's not as great as the OG Avengers taking on Thanos, but it's pretty cool to see how Marvel tackles another major villain in the universe. Like Kevin Feige said, Jonathan is a force on his own and he was supposed to bring the best out of the antagonist. So if need be, how would Marvel replace their conqueror? In the post credit scene of Quantumania, spoiler warning, a council of Kangs was introduced, and if you paid close attention, not all of them looked exactly alike. This council was full of thousands of different versions of the character from the multiverse, and lucky for the franchise, this can easily be used as a way to reintroduce Kang played by a different actor. What's even better is that in the movie, Scott Lang kills Kang, but instead of dying in a traditional way, he travels back in time and is rebirthed as Victor Timely, and this is the character that grows to be the Conqueror. Yeah, multiversal stuff can get very confusing, but it's still a great way to replace Majors and avoid any sort of controversy in the company. And so from possibly having the biggest breakthrough of his life taken away, to go through a troubled childhood, this was the rise and fall of acclaimed actor and alleged abuser Jonathan Majors.